I do want to ask about how you and Boogs linked up and how that whole kind of creative saga started. So walk me through the beginning. You guys, how'd you guys first meet you and Boogs? Well, Boogs, if you don't know, uh, he was a part of GMG, right? Back in the day. It was him, Buck, S. Dot, I'm saying 2, 2G, you know, Guts, uh, a couple of them. They're a part, like Earth City, actually, even before GMG, it was Earth City, I'm saying, which is actually Pills Lokes thing. You know, shout out Pills Lokes. But um, they're, they're Earth City YGs. And I met them. I honestly don't even remember how I met them, but they came to the studio. Uh, here, actually, we are we're, we're, we're in this in this spot, mm-hmm. and we started working. Uh, the whole crew, me and the whole crew, not just Bugs alone. Mm-hmm. Um, as you know, I'm saying the music started to make, and they're making the little buzz and stuff like that. Um, they stopped making music, and I called. I called them. I'm like, bro, why are you guys stopping? Like, you guys. Fucking get back in the studio. Like, you know what I'm saying? You guys make good music. Get back in the studio. So they they made music again. And then Black Challenger happened mm-hmm. in this same location in the next room. And um, from there, that was it. Just the one hit. They continued making original music. And that was that, man. And then Boogs became the highlight because I guess everybody drew to Boogs. And Boogs was the most consistent, most serious. He was the one that was always in the studio a lot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that the other guys weren't, but I would say that he was the most serious. Mm-hmm. And shout out Ghost too. Shout out Ghost. Ghost was there in the beginning as well. So when you guys recorded Black Challenger and you also shot the video, yes, I did. right? Yeah. Did you guys know you had a hit on your hands? And then when you saw how it was perceived, like how did that feel when you're like, whoa, 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 this is kind of like bigger than anything we've kind of experienced before? Um, I knew, like, I knew it was a hit because I was on Hipstrumentals. This is before they even came to the studio, right? And these guys, these guys don't really come prepared. So I was on Hipstrumentals listening to beats. And then I heard the beat, I'm like, commas. I'm like, holy shit, this beat's fire. So these guys came to the studio, right? They didn't know what to do. I'm like, yo, yo, listen to this beat. And I played them the the commas beat. And they're like, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Let's do this song, like, you know what I'm saying? So we got into it, and when they were doing it, I was like, shit, like, these guys actually are f***ing sick. And remember, mind you, I didn't even hear the actual record. I just heard the beat. So after now, when these guys got this shit done, and then I heard the original, I'm like, yeah, 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 we got a hit on our hand. That's crazy. Then we went to go shoot the video. Now, the video, per se, I didn't expect it to blow the way it did. I didn't even like the video. I didn't like how I edited it. I didn't like nothing about it. I just liked that we went to Cambridge and shot some of the video Mm -hmm. because I felt like if we didn't go to Cambridge, that video wouldn't be as big as it is. Mm -hmm. Because now what happened was when we went to Cambridge, now the Cambridge kid was like, yo, I'm in this music video with this rap from Toronto. And then boom, now they're sharing it to everybody in Cambridge. And then what happens is Cambridge turns into Hamilton, turns into Toronto back again, turns into Kitchener, you know, mm. turns into Guelph. Mm. The explosion of the song, especially on the outside of Toronto, it blew. Mm. And I feel like that was the reason why that record became bigger than wow. it became big, became big. It's almost like you hit the suburbs first and then trickled back down into the city and it was like a multiplied effect. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting because I remember DJing commas and people were expecting the Black Challenger drop. Like, yeah, when I was like DJing at Warehouse, (laughs) that's when I knew. So prior to that, did did Books already have a buzz? Yeah, you would say that he had like a little buzz. Um, I think he had had a song called Line Me that was pretty dope. Him and um, him and Sav and those guys. um, Mm -hmm. What else did we do during Black Challenger? We did, um, damn, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it wasn't like a buzz, but it was like a buzz. He had mm-hmm. a, he had a buzz. They had like a little something wanted mm-hmm. as a group though, as a collective, right? Mm-hmm. So it was, yeah. So as you see Bogues kind of, you know, ascending, right? And you're his producer, you're his engineer. So you're kind of also reaping the success. So tell me about how it was at the peak of Boogs' success as DJ Las Vegas, as the producer and engineer. What was that lifestyle like? Oh, it all depends on what the peak is. <laughs> like, what peak are we talking about? Are we talking about the peak of his career or the peak of the success of the song? 
I would say his career. The peak of his career, uh, when he got like, I, I would say the peak of his career is when he told me that, you know, Drake hit him up. That was probably the peak. And I was like, yeah, like, that's good for you, you know? And, uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much. But um, I was telling him, yeah, that's good, you know? And um, I would say stardom isn't for the weak heart, and it's not for egotistical people. Mm -hmm. So my experience in his peak, it didn't work for me. Mm. You know what I mean? I felt like as soon as he hit the peak for him, for me, it kind of was just like, okay, that fade into the background, mm. you know? And yeah, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it wasn't good for me, his peak. Why would you say that is? Is it because of the lifestyle attached to it? Was it the pace? Because as an engineer and producer, like we, we don't mind being the quote unquote in the backseat. Cause like we're putting the artist to the forefront, right? If you're like, the person behind the boards or whatever. So what was it about that lifestyle that y you felt like, oh, this is not for to me? Completely, to completely be honest with you, it was, his, it was his attitude. His attitude changed. It wasn't the same. Um, work, like, work became like, uh, like what we do in a studio, which is supposed to be fun and creative and energetic. It became work, hmm. you know? Um, and like, like I said, like his ego was huge. Mm -hmm. His ego was, his, he was getting ruder. He was getting more demanding, you know, that's not fun. And he's like, it's like, you're fun. I'm not a slave. And they go like, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like mm -hmm. him and certain me and certain people, we aren't slaves to this character. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I, that's where I would say his peak was r rough for people that actually was there to help him. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us had kind of fell, fell back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But at that time, financially, would you say for like... For him, it was good. How about for you? No. Really? Was, I'm not the rapper. But there's no kind of trickle-down effect? No. You're yeah. getting the same pay that you would get, like... Fam, at that, at that point, it's... Listen, at that point, you're not really looking at... And maybe that's something that I have a problem with, but at that point... I'm not looking at your finances. I'm looking like, okay, I got another kid to choose another path other than being in the streets. Do you understand what I'm saying? So making sure that he stays off the street is more important than any kind of money that can be given to me. So if he needs a favor, if he needs to be in the studio, if he needs to do this and needs to do that, that doesn't financially benefit me, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should, but I'm not looking at that. I'm not greedy. I want to see a nigga succeed. Excuse my language. I want to see him succeed. You know what I'm saying? So no, financially, no, it wasn't good for me. Financially, it was good for him. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I was on some, yo, if you want to lock me in, then you have to pay me. Otherwise, just keep it trill and I'll be gang. You know what I'm saying? And I'll mm -hmm. be helping you. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. But don't try and be like, oh, yeah, I have this amount and that amount. And you know what I'm saying? And you're trying to tie me into some change. I'm like, well, I'm going to need this for you to make me stop doing other shit. Mm -hmm. And that's where financially we are booked, but I didn't care about that. So it's like either that or I'm just going to keep it G and just help you. I'll mm -hmm. help you get to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And would you say that your friendship with him, because once he hit the peak and then everything happened after, were you guys able to mend that friendship or do you feel like it kind of ended like without closure in no, that we're sense? we're cool now. You're cool now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we're cool now. But I feel like we're only cool because he's going through a situation. Mm -hmm. Like, who knows what happens if he doesn't go to jail? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you go to jail, obviously, you start thinking about shit. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, where, like, were there record labels? Like, was he signed at this yes, point? Yes, he was. He was signed, yeah. At the peak, he was. He got, he, got a, he got a deal. 